This is the podcast presented by Hard to Find Media. Subscribe to Hard to Find Media on YouTube.com slash Hard to Find Media Network. This shit is free. Share it. Blast it. You can you can sense it. I mean, yeah. he, he had a whole block of brie last night. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. Coming back to get him. What it would be like to be not on a Ferris wheel, but a great wheel. So we are now we are now rotating. So how do you feel about buskers? I'm pretty into buskers. You are. I am. Here's the deal with the salads. Look we'll into the baking of a cake. <laughs> It's a little boring, kind of. Hello, my name is Joseph Tady. This is a podcast, Tady's Day Out. In elementary school, my uh, music teacher, Mrs. Sandstead, would periodically come up to you or another student and say, Hello, my name is Mrs. Sandstead. How are you? I am fine. And in front of the whole class, and, and again, she would spring this on you. You had to answer back in a song like, oh, my name is Joseph Tady. Like, I am fine. Like, talk about how you were doing or whatever. And it um, was often some of the single most, like, terrifying moments of my childhood. But I was also, I'm still scared of the dark. So, like, you know, it's no wonder that terrified me. Hey, welcome to Tady's Day Out. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. Um... Uh, yeah, what is this, episode 7? Wow, we are moving right along through this wonderful city. Um, and I, I know, I know that you guys are following me on Instagram at Tady's Day Out to see photos and videos of like when we're actually doing the days out and you know, sneak peek at the guest and what the subject is. Um, and you know, I'm sure you're liking the Facebook, so I'm not even going to bring that up. Um, I told myself I wouldn't bring that up and I, I, I'm a man of my word, man of my word. Um, this week I am joined by Bonnie Anderson. We went to the Wing Luke Museum, um, W I N G L U K E in the Chinatown International District. And you will learn a lot about that in the episode. You'll learn a lot about a lot of things. This is an info heavy, very funny, but info heavy episode. And, and I want to speak to something real quick about that. Um, this is a social issue, social issues heavy episode. Um, and there's a lot of learning about and talking about the history of people with color in this city and experiences in general, but also like mostly the city. And we touch on a lot of different aspects of that. And what I want to speak to real quick is that Bonnie and I are both white and are very aware of you know, our privilege and our experience and that we are learning from this experience as outsiders who have, who have, you know, we're reading about it on plaques and and hearing about it from tourist guides. And, and we've, we're definitely some people who like to be aware and we understand that sort of our part in creating equality and respect is learning and hopefully passing on that information. And I hope we're passing it on respectfully and in a manner that, um, Shows that it's all love and and respect, and I, I I don't think that it's not. But there's always there's always angles that you know people who don't live that experience may not see, and so so if there's an angle that we're not seeing, or, or somehow you you want to keep the conversation going, feel free to to message me on Facebook or email me tadiesdayout at gmail dot com. Um, always happy to hear from listeners, and I'm always happy to to learn more. Um, with that said, I hope you enjoy the episode. I had a really good time, and Bonnie is an amazing guest. So yeah, uh, here it is. Bonnie. Hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's my first podcast. Yes, it is your first podcast, uh, and I'm so glad to you know, be the person that, that you know, makes that happen for you. I appreciate it. Do you think there will be a second I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Maybe this will lead to a totally different lifestyle for me. Yes. The pod- <laughs> Let me tell you, the podcast lifestyle, it is crazy. You know, like, 
Uh, All right. Um, so we went to the Wing Luke Museum together. Wing we did. Luke. Wing Luke. And this is fun for me because this was the first you. You listened to a few episodes, mm-hmm. and this was the first listener requested outing. Yeah, this isn't one that I was like, "What should I do?" You brought this up to me. Yeah, and I knew nothing about it. Didn't even know it knew it existed. Yeah, um, and I was very excited to go with you to this awesome museum. Which, if the listener doesn't know, the Wing Luke Museum is a uh, Pan Asian. American History Museum mm-hmm. in the Chinatown International District. And you have to say the whole. You have to say Chinatown International District the, both times, like the whole time. Right. Well, I'll probably switch to the ID. I know. I always call it the ID, and but, so I thought that was an interesting thing to learn. Yeah, the tour guide said it's the Chinatown International District, and I had previously heard that Chinatown is like not PC anymore. Well, I don't know. I just I just had always thought that it was called the International District because while there's like a central sort of Chinese neighborhood, but there are also right. a lot of other communities represented there. So, right. but I'm not sure, but so yeah, they called it the Chinatown International District. Yeah. So, I can do that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I can I guess I'll do that. <laughs> I don't know, it's a little tough, but why change now? Yeah. Uh, um, and it was really cool. So, um, it's a museum that is dedicated to this gentleman mm-hmm. named Wing Luke mm-hmm. and goes into his history. He was uh, an Asian American yep. who came over from China. From China. Born the, in China. With his family. Yeah. And then and, they moved to the uh, university district, which was super unusual because right. our city has been racially segregated basically yeah. since the get-go. Yes. Um, especially then. So it was cool. So they moved there, but and then he was a... Went to fight for the United States in World War II Mm -hmm. and came back and um, was the first, didn't they say the first Asian American to be elected to a a position in all of the Northwest? Yes. Yeah. To city council. City council. Um, And listeners may notice that you are rattling facts off. And I'd like to touch on that before we go (laughs) forward. You love this museum. I do. and, And you know a lot about the history of it and... The area because you're a teacher. I am. And you have taken your classes on field trips there. I have. I've taken, I teach in Seattle, eighth grade. Yeah. Um, which is so much fun every day. Yeah. It's um, definitely not one of the hardest ages, <laughs> ages to teach. It was, the eighth grade was probably like one of my middle school was probably the toughest time in my life and yeah. probably the worst person I've ever been. Yeah. And then like, I was like, high school is going to suck, but it was great. I know. It's interesting. Yeah. that I feel like I get that reaction a lot from people when I, they learn that I teach middle school. People yeah. are like, oh, middle school is the worst. Yeah. Like, I, thank you for taking that bullet for yeah. society. Yeah. And I, you know, I tell my students that all the time. Yeah. That whenever I tell people I teach middle school, they're like baffled because yeah. they can't understand. And the reality is, is like, it's super challenging a lot of the time. And there's a lot of problems that students have that I can't solve on my own. Yes. But they're also super great. Like they're really funny and creative and they have so much energy and they think about things in a different way. So you're watching just, them sort of become themselves. Yeah, too. yeah, absolutely. So it's like important for me to remember that, um, they're 14. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like, why are you acting like this? Oh, right. right Cause yeah. you're, you're 14. Yeah. Uh, and then I feel like my dad had trouble with that. They're like, he's like, why can't you just like be quiet when we're out? And I'm like, Oh, I'm five. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm going to run around. Yeah. Sorry. Like, I have all these other things going on. I know. Yeah. So that's an important thing to remember. And they're really cool. They're, so they can be really cool. They can also be, um, you know, really frustrating, but yeah. really, but you just remember the cool things this week. We had a really awesome week. They worked so hard and I'm like, man, Kids are awesome, and I feel yeah. like the teenagers get a bum rap, you know? Yeah. Hey, um, be nice to teenagers. Yeah, though. come on. If there's anything we're trying to communicate with this Pan-Asian history podcast <laughs> episode, is that <laughs> teenagers nice get teenagers. a bad rap. Yeah, that's like the focus, yeah. primarily. Yeah. Um, but with my students, uh, every year we read this book because it's set in Seattle. Yes. And it's by Jamie Ford, and it's called Hotel in the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, and it's super cool. Have You, you haven't read it, have you? No, no, I haven't you read it. You should. But yeah, I want to now. I can lend you a copy, because you like history, too. So it's his, love it. It's historical fiction, so it's, set, uh, it's about this kid um, who's Chinese-American, who lives in the International District, um, right 1941, 1942. Um, and so there's a lot of anti-Japanese sentiment happening, and he is sent to an all-white school. Um, and Brutal. He's, yeah, and he's the only kid that's not white there, and so he gets made fun of a lot <clears throat> until one day there's another student um, that joins him who's Japanese, and it's a young girl. 
Oh, shit. Yeah, so imagine, you can imagine um, where that might go. Yeah. Right? But so she, but she's Japanese, and so there's a lot of problems, and her family ends up getting sent to an internment camp. Ugh. Um, and so this book, though, was inspired because a co- couple blocks away from the Wing Look Museum, and this might get a little too history y, so feel free to cut me off whenever. No, no, I, um, I, I, I love it. Like, <laughs> I've even mentioned in past episodes, like, yeah. I love history, yeah. and I love the minutia of it, and yeah. which is why when you were like, there's this whole museum, and I was like, I know absolutely nothing about any of right. this, and I probably should. Like, totally. This is a Seattle podcast that is intrinsic Seattle. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's a lot of important things you can learn just about Seattle when you go there, too. Totally. Um, but a couple blocks away from the Wing Luke, there's this hotel called the Panama Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, and when in like the 80s, some new owner bought it and was going through the basement and found all these trunks in the basement um, that had looked like they'd been there for a very long time. Yeah. And it turns out they had been. They were all the belongings of Japanese families from the Japantown. They had like, whoever owned the hotel at the time agreed to let them store their belongings there in the basement when they were forced to go to incarceration camps. Wow. Um, And so, and then they never came back for them. And so the novel, he kind of wrote, because he was inspired by that, um, you know, that event. And so he wrote a historical fiction novel. So it's a, it's a good book. It's really interesting. And it has a lot of, like, fun Seattle history, too. Like, you can learn about all the jazz clubs um, on Jackson. and things Yeah, like, you know? and they so, touched a little bit on yeah. that in the intermingling of the ID and the Central District. Yeah. Two segregated. Two segregated yeah, neighborhoods. neighborhoods. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And so they, it's, like, a really cool book. So we read that um, with my, or I read that with my students every year. And for a lot of them, because my school's in Wallingford, and um, a lot of my students have never even been to the International District, just because Seattle's... I rarely go there. Yeah. Yeah. And also, we like we talked about that on the way here, and you talked about it last week, but it's, Seattle's such a neighborhood city that sometimes it's hard to get out of your neighborhood. Right. Um, if you never so, leave your neighborhood, email me at day, <laughs> yeah. day out at gmail.com, and we'll talk about how much that is stupid, yeah. but I do it too. Right, yeah. I know. It's like you get stuck there. So for a lot of my students, it's really interesting for them to see, like, this is a very different place in our city. Right. That is, it's still your city. Um, but they do tours of the International District, and they talk about that, and so we go to that museum um, every year with students. It was bumping today. Like yeah, on a Saturday, bustling. restaurants are full bustling. with waiting, like yeah. people waiting outside, um... And it was cool to see, like, a lot of different, um, I guess I want to say, p- different types of people. Like, diverse. Yeah. A diverse yeah. type of people. It's Absolutely. like, how do I word that? That's not, like, weird. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I really enjoyed that as someone who never goes there. And I was looking in at some of the places with all the food and it's packed. And I'm like, right. I'm coming back next week yeah. and eat that chicken. You should. Uh, and there's really good restaurants. I mean, there's really great restaurants there. Part of the field trip that we always do is we go to a Chinese food restaurant. So... It's, like, quite the experience to have, I think, how many students do I take? Like, 80 right. eighth graders and sit in a Chinese food restaurant, you know, all for lunch at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then all the other people who just happen to be trying to have, like, a normal Wednesday lunch. Right. And the <laughs> like restaurant's like, this is a mixed bag. This is a lot of money <laughs> for a restaurant, but, like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. but, like, oh, yeah, teenagers, you yeah. know. Um, so it's just, like, a cool experience. And I think that museum is cool because it talks about... You know, this history of Seattle, um, Mm -hmm. and I think it's really important when you talk about the history of Seattle to talk about the history of segregation in Seattle. Right. Um, And so it talks about that. It also talks a lot about experiences of of immigrants. Right. And for me, that's always, I always love learning about that just because I think it's really important to remember that. Especially right now. Right. I know. And uh, yeah. And it also baffles me to think about how badass previous generations were. And how, yeah, like... <laughs> like, the, the stuff they had to go through in order to get... The shitty jobs that yeah. they worked forever to sleep in small rooms. Like, Unreal. a lot of information about that. And yeah. how much they really, like, built the culture. Right. In ways that you don't realize. Like, the reason yeah. you can wear the clothes you wear and, and mm-hmm. stuff is because they worked, like, 16 hours a day. Yeah, like, all that denim that making you're Making denim. Right now. We'll, so... <laughs> So we'll get back to Wing Luke in a second. The listener's like, you split Wing Luke like in half. Yeah, and sorry. So no, 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 it's great. I love tangents. But so there is an art part of it towards yeah. the end, which was great. And there's amazing like tapestries, old tapestries yeah. made or made from, you know, sometimes they're old stuff, sometimes they're new. Yeah. Um, and that like, was a, that art hall or is like a rotating exhibit. So, oh, cool. Because the last time when I was there last year, it was something totally different. Yeah. So. And then there's just, like, a wall with a bunch of denim hooked on it. <laughs> and it's, like, 
like, oh, the legacy of seamstresses and the ID, yeah. you know, like Asian American seamstresses that right. made all this stuff, but it's just but a bunch of denim. you don't care. No, I care <laughs> about their history and how, but like, it was, that's a shitty art piece to just have pieces of cut out denim. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it kind of looks cool because it's like the legs of jeans and they're right. like hanging, so it almost looks like scallops. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a scallop. But I understand. You were it just, does you were remind not me. Impressed. The net of it did remind me, this is a weird reference, of the movie Man of the House, 1994. Oh, Chevy yeah. Chase, Farrah Fawcett. JTT. Yeah. Where they hook the thing. They're slowly making this, like, hooking thing on this net. I don't From stuff that. on the beach. It's cool. I do. Wait. Is that the one where Chevy, wait. Is that the, where they do, like, this the rain dance or whatever, Yes, too? yeah. It's, like, Chevy super Chase. super offensive to yeah. Native culture. Oh, super offensive. Yeah. They're like, hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. But okay. it was the 90s where, like, oh, it's cool. We know it's a stereotype. Yeah, we're, like, we're, like fine with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of those movies where you watch it now and you can't believe that that was okay. Exactly. Uh, so I hated the denim and I kind of couldn't let it go. Yeah, that's um, okay. Yeah. Well, and then also though, there's all this like really amazing intricate fabric work throughout exactly. the whole museum. Yes. So there's like a lot of really cool stuff. So the denim just like, it was like, okay, <laughs> like cool, I'm going to go look at this amazing hand-sewn tapestry or like yeah. s- skirt. <laughs> so coming back to Wing Luke yes. and, and his importance, uh, we touched on the city council thing mm-hmm. which was Huge, um, and, and his forwarding of like, kind of just just integrating Asian Americans into um, being able to live where they want, right? And work on equal housing, and, and yeah, work on yeah. equal housing, not just for Asian Americans, but everyone in the mm-hmm. city. Yeah, um, that's a whole other really cool, interesting history in Seattle too. There were a lot of like sit-ins in different real estate offices, real estate like real, real estate companies oh. that still exist now. Wow! Because in Seattle, you know, realtors would go and sh- share different prices or properties with people based on their skin color. Oh, totally. And that happened. I mean, and that arguably probably still happens. I mean, so, the story in LA of like Earl Watts and stuff. Yeah. Um, if you watch, there's amazing history of like the Crips and Bloods yeah. documentary, which oh, like, I've not watched, and that. it pretty much all starts with the red line. You know. Like, why that happened, like, keeping these black people in these shitty neighborhoods. And if you cross the Earl Watts, cops beat you up and push you back in there. And, like, they don't rent to you. And so, and well, and that's the thing. It's, like, we like to think about, I feel like Seattle kind of has a reputation. A lot of my friends, you know, and we always have, you know, pretty progressive elected leaders. And we kind of have this reputation. And there's a lot of things that we're doing really right. Yeah. But there's a lot, there's, like, this very real... You know, North and South are still North, pretty segregated. They're super too. segregated. Yeah. It's you know, and then even friends that come and visit from out of town. If we go out, since I you know I live in Wallingford too, if I point out to them, like look yeah. around, you know, who yeah. do you see? Who do you see? Yeah, uh, it's pretty remarkable. And because there are racial covenants that probably still exist in deeds of houses that say that you can't own this property if yeah. you're, if you're a person of color. Sad. It makes me sad too because it's something that people don't talk about all the time, and right. so it's like there's a lot of people who don't have to talk about it and it doesn't really affect them. So they're, you know, or they don't think it affects them. Yeah. And so it's like something that you can ignore. Um, but then what that ends up doing is like creating different spheres of existence within the same city of people who never really interact with, you know, people who think differently. Has than anyone ever told you you're intelligent? <laughs> Cause huh. a boom. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I try to, that's one of the, my things that I try to help my students understand is that, their story is not every story. Right. You know, your story is not every story. And so it's really important to understand that something that pisses you off might not piss somebody else off. Especially having grown up, uh, I'm a white male uh-huh. with privilege. Yeah. Like, I, I think one of the best things that I can do is just be aware of other people's yeah. stories. And, like, and, learn as much as possible yeah. and acknowledge that it's your responsibility to learn it. It's right. not their responsibility to teach you. Right, yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah. So for me, that's a big part of, you know, why I really love reading this book and taking my students to the Wing Luke Museum. Helps create a quality. And, yeah. and like, an ideas of a quality yeah. that will be more innate in for younger sure. people. Yeah. yeah. And I think, to be totally honest, there's a lot of things that... Um, came more difficult to different generations Mm -hmm. that tend to come easier for kids today. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of kids today just sort of like, well, of course that's so stupid that somebody would not be able to buy a house because they're black. Right. Right. Um, you know, and so it's just then making sure that they know how to sort of follow that up with Mm -hmm. action that actually, and even their parents would be like, it's not stupid, (laughs) but they're like, (laughs) I guess we've never talked about it. Yeah. I didn't even think about it, you know? And so it's just, so that's kind of cool. So, um, so yeah, I like it. I think it's a powerful experience for, for anyone, especially, especially the, yeah, like, like, yeah, like you said, you didn't even know this museum was around. around. Yes. And, yeah. And, but the thing is, so it's not just overwhelming, like almost like, like 
It, it's, it's a, a lot, lot of amazing social issues, issues there yeah. that you learn about, but yeah. it's also a really fun museum. Yeah. Like the Bruce Lee exhibit, let's yeah. talk about that, is amazing. Yeah, I'm happy that you liked it. And I'm not, I was I was not like a into Bruce Lee kind of mm-hmm. person, but I really thought his story is so cool. And so right. I really like that exhibit. Um, they show, like you walk in and you're greeted with this like, like how cool Bruce Lee is yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. Um, and they tell it to you straight. I actually, I want to play a clip of that. Do it. It says, <laughs> it says, you walk in and one of the first things you see is Bruce Lee kicked ass at life. It's true. Um, I'm really glad that they are not mincing words. Me too. Punching movie villains in the face, refusing to stay down, shattering expectations. It's not wrong. Like, I love that. I yeah. love, like, oh, like he, you I know. know, how badass he is. Yeah, he's so cool. And uh, he was so small. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he's 5'7". We were talking at, like, 130, and he's yeah. ripped. He's so ripped. Yeah. I couldn't believe it, because they have that clip. Yeah, that, and then he's just, like, he looks like a statue carved mm-hmm. of marble. Right. That's what his body looks he, like. It totally does. And he got that way, because we have seen, they show his, like, daily regimen. It's, yeah. like... Sleep from 11.30 to 6.30. Yeah. Morning, like, meditation and, like, for two hours. Uh-huh. Play with kids two hours. Yeah. Gap time. And it's like... <laughs> for the khakis. For the khakis, yeah. <laughs> and then it's, like, uh, screenwriting for two hours. Play right. with kids again. Like, right. teach with friends. And then, like... And then there was, like, cardio, cardio in there, too. Yeah. And there was all different things. And so... And I was telling you, I love comic books. I'm a yeah. Batman fanboy. Uh-huh. And there is a thing online that's, like... What Bruce Wayne does every day to, like, keep his body in peak physical <laughs> condition. It's like, Sunday, 30 minutes of cardio, like, 40 minutes of training with Robin. <laughs> like, is this something this that was created for a comic book, or is this something that a fan created? I, I think it's officially created, but okay. I think it's just, like, it's one of those things where, like, you buy, um, like, oh, like, a, an encyclopedia or, like, of... Of Batman, you know, facts or something yeah. from DC, <laughs> but it's online and it's so stupid. But when I read it, I'm like so badass because I am a child still. So reading that, I was like, "You're Batman." Yeah, like, Bruce Lee is Batman. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Bruce, was, hey. Yeah, hello, and Bruce Wayne. Honestly, Wayne? this is the yeah. first time I made yeah. that connection. Isn't yeah. that weird? Bruce Lee and Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Um, they also had some of his writings that he did while he was like he had a, got a back injury, so he had to go on bed rest for a mm-hmm. while. And there was one where it was basically just talking, it was like, I don't know what the word is, but he was writing to sort of remind himself that he wants to, he, like, of the It was like a daily power. affirmation for yeah. himself. Because yeah. they told him he wouldn't really heal that well. Right. And be able to do the things he was doing. Right. They were completely wrong. Yeah. It was cool. It yeah. was also, they had like a little setup of his, the food that he ate. Yes. And it took you a while to understand that they were props. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, is this real? How did this they is, say I don't this? Think this, this is must actually, have spelled. Yeah, it's not so, actually Bruce Lee's milk carton. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was like, what? Why, how did they have this? Like, And you were like, I'm pretty sure this isn't Bruce Lee's plastic carrot. <laughs> yeah. Or like his, daily, his lettuce that hasn't wilted yet. And I was like, oh it's my right. God. You were just really in the moment. And right. it was very realistic looking fake food, I guess. Yeah. And so I, you just... That's I, where you are. I have a problem with being earnest. I know we yeah. talked about this off mic earlier. But, That's not a problem, though. But it, I end up saying really dumb stuff, yeah. such as, you know, Amy and I are at a restaurant, and mm-hmm. my food comes out first, and I'm like, oh, Amy, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring your food out in a second. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. I. That's what. That's how a restaurant works. Like, no big deal. I wasn't worried. And I'm like, right. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> tight. My, yeah, got it. Yeah, I just, no, that's cool. It's yeah, totally fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, uh, I knew I'm, what I was saying. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm also, I'm very intelligent. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I went to the Wing Link Museum. So <laughs> yeah, like, I know yeah. everything. Ask me some questions about exactly. Wing Link. Yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, the Bruce Lee thing was really, really fun. And, yeah. I mean, and there's still those social issues of, like, what he had to overcome. Yeah. And as you were talking about with me, like, him not taking roles that painted him in a way of, like... You know, being stereotypical, right? Uh, just Which, it's like India. It's like when it's like uh, in that fucking show, Master of None. You know, with on Netflix. Where, oh yeah, oh, where he's yeah. like, you know, they don't want to be like like the taxi driver, right? And that's know? the thing, and it's really hard for a lot of actors to do that because it's like they need jobs. It's sad that's still a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a dollop on the native Native American version on that. Um, oh which yeah, is a podcast I love, and how hard that was. And, yeah, and about the guy who played Tonto. For sure. Yeah. There's a really good documentary. I think it might still be on Netflix. 
called Real Engine, and Real is spelled R E E L, and it's all is about engine spelled I N. Yeah, cool because it's about like the stereotypical treatment of Native Americans yeah. in Hollywood, and one and so it kind of talks a lot about you know there's all there's a lot of things that they did that they got wrong obviously, yeah, um, but in a lot of the old John Wayne movies they actually would employ actual like Navajo. Uh, men to be in the scenes and so they would say that, but no one on the set knew the Navajo language yeah. except for the actors and so they'd be like alright well can you say this line and they'd say like say hey don't don't come in here. You know, yeah. say it in Navajo. Right, yeah. And so then, um, because the actors knew that nobody knew Navajo, they they would just say, they'd be like making fun of John Wayne. Yeah. You know? But nobody knew. And so yes. they would do like those translations now, and it's yeah. like they're like making fun of John Wayne to his face. Nobody knows. That's amazing. Uh, but Navajo good, people are like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like at least we got yeah. something. I know. It's a good documentary because it kind of talks about how that progressed and sort of like the different like tropes, I guess, that yeah. Native Americans have been shoved into in different movies. Yeah. Um, so I'd. Highly recommend it. It comes with Bonnie Anderson. Two yeah. thumbs up. Luckily, we had a black president, so racism. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. Sorry. Racism. No, yeah. So why don't we even talk about <clears throat> Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Obama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also that really cool exhibit about sports. Yes. Um, which, so you also, we talked so much throughout the whole thing. I was. It was so cool to go to this museum with you because Thanks. you had been there. Yeah. And you also noticed how much it's changed and grown. Yeah. And you said the sports thing was new. Yeah. And it goes all the way from like early Olympic athletes mm-hmm. to um, like to Ichiro yeah. and people who play for UW yeah. and Apollo Ono. Yeah. Who I'm pretty sure I used to live on Bainbridge Island. I was working at an environmental ed center over there. They don't need to know that, do No, you? they do. So what else? Did, <laughs> what years? Like, where'd you, what was your old address? How much did you make? Uh, well, I was in grad school, so yeah. negative. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but I was, I was going by the Safeway on Bainbridge Island, and I feel, like, very confident that I saw him riding a bike, Apollo Anton Ono. Yeah. And I feel like he's from this region. You are already a confident person, so, <laughs> so I, like, fucking trust you on this. <laughs> Did you say, oh, no? <laughs> I, okay. No. That is, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That was, like, low-hanging fruit. <laughs> and I might bleep that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, I didn't I didn't say anything to him. And it might not have been him. He had a helmet on. But yeah. he, was, he was biking. Could have been him. Could have been him. You know? Yeah. I also saw on the ferry once from Bainbridge. I'm just going to go off. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, on the ferry once from Seattle to Bainbridge, I saw the actress that plays Juliet on Lost. Because she lives on Bainbridge Island. Oh, cool. Yeah. Love lost. Yeah. Wait, yeah. There's no Juliet. love lost between me and that. Wait. No, I do love there's lost. No love lost between and then no, 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 no. I've made a lot of lost references on both my old podcast and I'm pretty sure yeah. already this one. Where isn't there a podcast right now that's about lost, but it's like not in any order? Like they're not because like there's a lot of podcasts that like watch a TV show from beginning to end. Oh yeah. But I feel like I heard about one that was like they're jumping around. They're just like jumping around. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Um. Because most people who would listen to that, I feel like, has already seen it. Yeah. Well, I don't think... I can't imagine there's a lot of people that are, like, picking up Lost for the first time. Right. Right? I no, loved I it. feel like there you are. You think so? I've watched it several times because each time I've watched it, it's been with a new roommate oh, who's watched it for the first time. Oh, interesting. And has gotten hooked. So one time I lived with these two brothers, and me and the younger brother were, like, re Or he was watching it for the first time, and I was, you know, watching it again. We were loving it. We, like, kind of were hooked on it. What's your favorite season? Uh, three. Three. Is that the one? It opens with them in the house doing a book. Oh, yeah, doing like a book yeah. club. Oh, yeah, that's right. Three oh, and five when good. they're doing the time jump. Yeah, that's true. It's See, I love it all the way through. I know a lot of people don't, but... I don't like whatever the season was that was like in the writer's strike. Season four. End of season three, beginning of season four. But wasn't it? season two also not very good or something? No, I, like I guess... Oh. No, that's when the hatch opens. And Desmond, I oh, love yeah, that. Oh, yeah, I love Desmond. Okay. All right, anyway, sorry. Back to your roommates. Um, but then, like, the older brother would come home and be like, why are you watching this, like... Why are you watching mm-hmm. so much TV, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. then he'd just stand there and, like, watch... <laughs> And, like, ask questions. And I'd be like, why don't you sit down? And he'd be like, no. And, like, go to his room. But, like, one time he stood there for, like, 25 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. Like, it's good. You are describing exactly the way that I got into uh, the television show Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, my God. Nice. <laughs> my old roommates in college. 
listen or watched it and they were obsessed with it and I at first was like I am not watching this yeah. and then I would just kind of start watching it and now I think it's I mean I love that show I love the episode of Seinfeld where you find out that he's really into Melrose Place yeah. <laughs> and like, but like won't admit it to anyone yeah. but then I they know. find out and they find out well that's why I feel like with 90210 and Melrose Place because I've talked to some folks that are like in their 40s right so like they were like in their maybe 40s 50s so they were like younger when it was on maybe yeah. like, like not teenagers but like young adults and everybody was super into that show oh like, yeah it was like huge. everybody was yeah. so, might as well be game of thrones back then right yeah. yeah i mean you know everyone wanted dylan or brenda or whoever they wanted yeah right um, we're, and we this was all featured in the Wing Luke. Yeah, season. I know. I was gonna say we're really getting into all yeah. the nooks and crannies of Wing Luke. The yeah. Buffy the Vampire exhibit was a favorite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because there was an Asian guy in one episode. Yeah, in one episode, I think. Yeah. So um, what was cool about both the sports thing and um, there's literally well other rooms specifically for different types of Asian people. It's not just about the Chinese right. or the Japanese. They they do the Filipino history. The right. And that's what she said. The tour guide, because we went on, and we can talk about this too, but we went yeah. on a, the Wing Luke is located in an old historic hotel. Yeah. Um, and she said that it was, the Wing Luke's the only pan-Asian museum in oh, right. the country. Yeah. So it was cool to see, they have, yeah, up on their second floor there, they have all these different rooms devoted to different communities mm-hmm. of immigrants. And so, you know, kind of spanned, um, where did it start? Ooh. Oh. With the, it was like Mancala, the game. Oh, Mancala. yeah. I can't remember. Was it the, oh, yeah, Philippines? It was the Philippines? Yeah. yeah. So it started like the Philippines and ended in India. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of like did, does the whole gamut and kind it of took talks me about, way too long to answer that question. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's like dead air for a podcast, <laughs> yeah. but I'm leaving it in. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So that I mean that whole yeah. So there's an, an, a room dedicated to like every sort of different community that came yeah. through there, including an Indian community, yeah. which I personally don't typically think of as Asian, but it's totally South Asian. Yeah. And well, it's just and it's interesting to talk about how different groups get put into categories. Right. And so I think so. You know, and we talked a little bit about that there. Like there, that is true. There are some places in the world that sort of within Western culture have been given and more their own identity and right. then other places that are sort of part of this bigger like Asia yeah. for example I'm you like know? you're Indian and it's right. like right but I'm Asian too like yeah yeah well I know yeah so yeah. it's just it's interesting to think about how that happens and right. how you know why is it that some groups it's mostly have our like ignorance too. Yeah, well, <laughs> like sure. just white people being like I, you don't matter as much right. so I'm just gonna call you this exactly yeah. well and that's like I mean if they were if, they're, if Seattle would have had some sort of museum dedicated to African immigrants, which, yeah. you know, there's a lot of African immigrants in Seattle. Um, there's, you know, victims of the same thing, of just sort of being generalized. You're instead African. Of, yeah. Yeah, but you're like, oh, I'm actually from Ghana. Right. Like, that's my country. Like, Africa's not a country. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and so that's, it's, it's just interesting how people are sort of, yeah, Western culture grants certain groups status. Yeah. See, I love it. Just yeah. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Super problematic. Yeah. See, I'm like really into it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Uh, it's also fascinating just we're two white people talking about this, you know? Yeah. No, but it's good. Let's fucking, let's fucking get out, let's get it out yeah, there that white people care a little bit. Yeah. They're like, mm-hmm. I don't know, not, I guess I'm patting myself on the back in a yeah. hugely pop. Terrible. Yeah, life. you're the perfect person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're welcome that I'm talking about this. Yeah. Like you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm deemed to learn about right, it. Right, of course. Um, what do you think of the hotel tour? I loved it. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of cool. I re- yeah, so this is the historic hotel tour. While I won't be taking you into any galleries, I will be taking you through the historically preserved spaces inside our building, which are only available to see on this tour. Um, so we're pretty much going to be stepping back in time. Time traveling for the next 45 minutes or so. We're going to be going upstairs and to a small little storefront that we have saved next door. It's a really great introduction to the rest of our museum. Um, and feel free to ask me any questions along the way. Really, like, there was this one person on there who was, like, half crazy a little bit. Mm-hmm. Who was asking some funny questions. My yeah. favorite one of which was, we go into this old shop that had been there since, like, 1910 up yeah. to about 19... Uh, 2012, 2008. 2008. Yeah. Um, and it was really cool and they preserved a lot of it and it was so cool to see it was an original gathering place for, you know, Chinese and Asian immigrants. And then she's like, so if the museum moves again, what will happen to this place? 
And the tour guide's like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know. We're pretty much in our permanent home. And she's like, right, but like, what but if what you if? move? Yeah, but what if? And she's like, I, I don't know. We have no plans here. And she's like, right, but like, what do you yeah. think would yeah. happen? And the I tour don't... guide's like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's I not. I don't know. It's not really a question. That's not that we're. You know, do you have any questions about like the history? Right. That's and, where I'm trained to talk to you about. And the woman was like, mm. and I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, what do you want for it? Like, I don't know. Super strange. They're going to burn it down. Like, I know. Yeah. That's the best thing about tours, though, is that there's always people with, like, you know? And yeah. And they ask whatever you want to ask. You know, right. at least she felt comfortable enough to say that, but it was... Yeah. And then here we are making fun of her, but that's yeah. cool. Yeah. She'll never hear this. She'll never... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How would she hear it? Yeah. I don't think she's from Seattle. No. They seem like they're from out of town. They did seem that so, way. So, unless they're from some town that Tady Stay Out is, like, really making some headway in. Yeah. When I, I'm going to take a trip to Reno, and I bet I'll see her yeah. again. I was going to say, like, Indiana. Oh, yeah. Gary, Indiana. Gary, Gary Indiana. Indiana. I love the music man. Uh, music man. Shit poopy. <laughs> she is the one that's fucking hard to get. <laughs> um, that's pretty good. If well, I have spare time in classes, sometimes I'll just play a song from the music man for them to watch, like yeah. the video, because it's just a w- good way to waste like two minutes. For the listener, Tim Block, a previous guest on uh, this podcast, um, I w- he teaches at a high school as well. Oh, cool. And he is also a music director there, and he was the music director for the play Music Man, which ah, Amy and his boyfriend Tim Neal right. all went and saw, and it was pretty, pretty great. There were some amazing parts and some funny, like, there's, yeah. it's always funny, there's kids who are like too into it yeah and then there's like the kids who are like really good and then the kids that are just bad yeah but it was good what high school uh university prep uh, yeah. uh-huh, uh-huh. private <laughs> right hey it's a little too private am i right <laughs> like what some transparency all right we're getting we're getting uh to a wrap-up phase yeah um let's see what didn't we talk about that we saw i feel like not that i feel like we saw well, we, most of it yeah, I feel like and we talked about most of it. The yeah. hotel thing was cool, and like learning about the associations was cool. Right, that's like an extra tour you don't have to go on, but yeah. it's free with admission. Yeah. I if if you're listening to this and you go, highly recommend it. Yeah, it's super awesome. Yeah, um, it's like forty five minutes too. Yeah, and it's just a sort of like this added bonus. Right, and it's just kind of interesting, and they had different things set up there. Um, and so much of it has been preserved, like yeah. the buildings itself, and it's it's really cool to see all of that old timey stuff. And, yeah. And the mixture of Western and Asian culture in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's a fun museum, and I think that more people in Seattle should check I, it out. I definitely recommend it. Yeah. I had a really good time. Uh, not surprised. I, I figured I would just because history, but yeah, it's it's really well put together. Yeah. Well, all right. Cool. Bonnie, thank you so much for your knowledge. Hey, uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it, you were great. I definitely want to have you on again. Sure. Um, and uh, listeners, thank you for listening. Yes. Go to the Wing Luke Museum. Go to the Wing Luke Museum. Take uh, the tour. They also oh, I didn't talk. We didn't talk about this. Okay. They offer separate tours that don't come with admission. Oh. That you can go on like the Bruce Bruce Lee's Chinatown tour. Oh, that's right. Um, and then I don't. They used to offer tours to the general public about Hotel in the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, but right. I think that those might just be for schools now. I'm oh sure. yeah. And but, the reason they did a Bruce Lee thing and we didn't really say because he lived in the ID yeah. for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's not just like oh because he's Asian. Well, and isn't he yeah. buried in? Um, the cemetery that's like overlooks Lake Washington. I believe so. Lake Lakeview Cemetery. Lakeview Cemetery because of right. It's on the it views the lake. <laughs> yeah, yeah aptly named. No, oh, right. Um, I guess uh, you're not yeah. trying to get too crazy with the cemetery name. Yeah, you don't yeah. need to. There's yeah. other maybe people. disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be. It's not like a destination. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know where I want to get buried. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway. So yeah, thanks again, guys, and uh, go out, experience Seattle, and uh, yeah. make it a great day. Adios. Blast it. Fuck it.